Hey everyone, so this is our next lesson that you should be watching prior to coming to class on Thursday. Um, so this is understanding the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. So notice that phrase fundamental theorem of calculus, that means super important. There's actually a bunch of fundamental theorems of in um, higher level mathematics. Um, so this is very important um, and there's a whole lot of AP questions based on this fact. Okay, so here's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I is an interval. The function I is defined by the integral from A to X of F of T dt. It has to have the properties that is continuous and differentiable. Remember, continuous on the endpoints. It doesn't have to be differentiable on the endpoints. If we take the derivative of both sides we end up getting f of x. So if you notice, if we take the derivative of i, right, that's just i prime. If we take the derivative of this, what we end up doing is the dx and the integral kind of just cancel each other out and we put the x inside, right? So that's kind of what happens here. I'm not gonna go through the proof. It's much more complicated than I would prefer to spend time in class on. If you are interested, you can come see me or I can send you a video of someone doing it, but I just, I don't like spending the time. Um, but the whole idea is the when we take the derivative d dx of the integral, they basically cancel each other out and then we end up substituting in for the variable, um, the variable here, right? And notice this is a variable. So the variable is in terms of x. There's kind of two variables in this problem. Okay, so if I was taking the derivative d dx of 0 to x of the square root of t plus 1 dt, all we do is replace t with x. So x plus 1. That's it. Right? Don't overthink it. Right? So pause and try number 2. Even though that is a super complicated problem, we're doing the derivative of the integral and we just make a substitution. x cubed minus one all over 2x squared plus x plus one. Done. Now this next one's a little more complicated. What do you notice about this problem? Instead of just an x, we have a whole function. So I want you to use your best estimate. Take a guess, what do you think the answer here is? So instead of substituting in just x, we're substituting in the whole thing. So e to the 3x squared plus 1 plus 3x squared plus 1, and that had that square root. But then there's something else we have to do. What else do you think we have to do? This is a chain rule, because remember, we're taking the derivative. What's the, deriv what's the chain rule? What's the derivative of our inside? So in this case, this is our, our inside. This is our inside. So we're going to multiply that by 6x. So we have to multiply the function by the derivative of whatever the derivative of the function is, right? So 3x squared plus 6 has a derivative of 6x. And that is it. Okay, so some properties. When we integrate from a to a, we just get 0. And think about that logically. That makes sense because... If I have a curve, the integral is just the area of the curve, right? What's the area of a, a line? Like it's length times width. Well, the length is, say, 3. The width is 0, right? The width is so tiny, it's 0. So a times 0 is 0. So anytime you have the same thing here and here, you get 0. Okay, and so now this one... If we move our bounds around, right? So that's the integral from A to B. If we have A to B and we want to flip-flop it from B to A, all we end up doing is taking a negative, right? Because the area under the curve, right, of a negative is negative. If this, this area was like, is like negative 3, the area below the curve is negative. So that's why that happens. Right, so we're actually kind of like we're flipping the graph upside down, and that's what so that's what's actually happening here. 
So anytime you flip your bounds, you make, you take the negative of the integral. Okay, so now look at number four. So notice we have the d dx of the integral from x cubed to five. So that x is in the wrong position. We needed to move up top. We cannot do this without the with the x in the bottom. It doesn't work. So we're gonna rewrite this. So d dx. So five x cubed. Sorry, I left my stylus at my at school, and it's Tuesday, and I'm sitting in my house, so I have to write with my finger. I apologize for the terrible writing. I don't know. After all these years, I think you guys are probably used to it. Okay, so now what do I need to do here? Since we flip-flopped our bounds, I have to throw a negative out, right? So my answer is going to be negative, and then what do we get? We're gonna substitute in our x cubed, so this becomes x to the 12th plus one to the one third, and then times, what's the derivative of that function, of the, x, of the bound? Derivative of x to the third is three x squared, and that's our answer. All right, so now we're gonna do a bunch of just practice AP problems, and this is super common. Um, just be careful, this tends to fall out of our brain, but we'll get, we'll get used to it. All right, so what do you think the answer to number five is? So all we're doing is substituting. It's just one over x. We're done. That's it. Don't overthink it. All right, last page. Nope, I'm lying. There's two more. All right, so the graph of f is shown below. If g of t equals the integral from negative 3 to t f of x dx for what number t is g of t the greatest all right so this is a little tricky but this is super important we're going to do a bazillion of these to the point where you're going to get really annoyed all right what's the relationship between g and t g and t g and f right well remember we have this if we take the derivative of both sides, what do we get? g prime of t equals f of t. We make that substitution. I'm taking the derivative, right? The derivative here, and then d dx, or d dt in this case. f of t. So that means f is really g prime, right? This is a graph. This is the graph of f. This is really the graph of g prime of t, right? This is the derivative graph. This is so popular. We're going to do so many problems with that. That's, this is how it goes. So they're telling you this is f, but really it's g prime. So if this is g prime, what would be, what, at what number t is g the greatest? So what's that asking? Maximum, right? Greatest. That's a max. So if this is g prime, where's the max? It's at three, why? Because the graph of the derivative, g prime is going from a positive to a negative. That's it. So recognizing that they're naming a function based on an integral gives us that fact that, okay, if I take the derivative, this is really the graph of the derivative. All right, last one. And these are all in your textbook also. All right, so we have g of x. Right? The graph of function y equals g of x is below. So this is g of x. Which of the following could be the graph of f? But what's f? Again, we have this g of x is the integral. So g prime of x equals, we make that substitution, f of x. So which of these could be f? They're asking which of these is g prime. Which one is the derivative of the function above? All right, so pause the video if you need to, take a second. What do you think? Well, this has ma a max or a minimum here and a max here, so those are my zeros. So this thing should cross the x-axis 
here and here. That one looks good. That one looks good. All right, the only one that doesn't look good is this one. All right, and then this, this thing about the slope. What kind of slope do we have here? So we have a negative slope, then a positive slope, then a negative slope. So let's look for that. A negative, a positive, then a negative. Well, this is positive, positive, negative. So that one doesn't make sense. This is below, so negative, and then it goes positive, and then it goes negative again. So it's going to be this one. Over here, it's positive, negative, positive. Right? So the answer is B. All right, so like we've been doing, um, this is homework 68. We're going to work on this in class. So please take a picture of 412 um, and bring that to class with you or bring your textbook with you. I only have three books in the class, so I want to make sure that everyone has the problems available. All right, that's it. I will see you later. Bye.